The number one question I get asked when it comes to business finances is where do I start? It's long overdue to be answered here in the podcast. For anyone starting a business or ready to face their numbers, this is what we're going to unpack today together. Okay, well, let's go. Come on, it's coffee time. Good morning, Carrie. Just the usual? Good morning, Ronnie. Yes, please. Have a seat. We'll bring it right over. Thanks, mate. One of the biggest struggles with money is separation. This is critical. In your business finances, I kind of think of it like individual humans. Let's say Sophie and Emma. They've been friends since high school. They catch up for coffee at their local cafe and talk about what's going on in life family, careers, the kids' activities, but they don't share bank accounts. Their funds are their own and they pay their share when they get together. Using the same analogy, the same should apply in your business. You have a personal bank account. This is to pay your bills, the rent, the mortgage, groceries, kids' school costs and the coffee catch-ups with friends. Your business accounts pay for anything business, the printer paper, the stock you buy, or any operating costs you might have. Without this clear separation, the waters get really murky and it can take your business finances in a difficult direction and then we have to deal with the mess. If you currently have personal and business finances combined, I don't want to freak you out, but now's the time to make the change and correct that path and also have an easier way to look forward. To make that change, all you need to do is open a new bank account in your business name. If you're a sole trader, meaning you're not a company and the business is just under your name, you can even just open a bank account in your name that you decide is just for business. I do also recommend getting an account that has a debit card attached to it for those online expenses you have in your business. This helps remove the temptation to use our personal funds with existing debit or credit cards. If you already pay for online items in your business, you will need to go and change that over to the business card. And you can do this as soon as you have the card in hand. The sooner we clean up all the spaces, the sooner we have less morphing of funds to worry about. You might be asking at this stage, if I now have more accounts, more cards, what happens if I accidentally use the wrong one? Never fear. If this happens, and trust me, it's pretty easy to do, just move the funds from the wrong account and put them in the right account. Let's say... You're at the grocery store, you're grabbing a couple of items for tonight's dinner and you use the wrong card. You use the business account instead of your personal account. As soon as you have access to online banking, simply transfer the funds from your personal account into your business account for exactly the right amount. This will mean you've corrected the mistake and it's like it never happened. But, and there's always a but, Make sure it is to the dollar and cents of the same amount and make that transfer as soon as possible. It is really easy to forget and in months time when you're going over your numbers, you might have forgotten what happened and why. All of our business transactions in one place makes your business finances smooth sailing. Not only is it easier to track but it's also going to make reconciling your accounts much easier. Another aspect of getting started with your business finances is collecting the data and documenting the number movements. This includes revenue, expenses, and giving us the profit results. Having this process in your business will help you see how you are tracking and also give you the ability to make the decisions from the numbers. I have a simple tool available for this on my website and the other option is to become a BizBeans Club member where tools like this are included. The BizBeans Club is a private membership for business owners. We hold monthly Zoom sessions and you also gain access to the tools, the tutorials, 
to help you manage your business finances in a simple and stress-free way. The link and more information to the club is available in the show notes if this sparks your interest. And if you're just starting or your business is tiny and you're not ready for a tool, you can simply write the numbers down. Having a dedicated book to keep your business finances organized is a great way to start working on your numbers and get into great habits of record keeping. I personally recommend you use a book that has lined paper and draw up five columns. The first column is the date of the transaction. Column number two is for the description. Column three will be your revenue. That's the sales and money coming into the business. Column four is for expenses. And the last column, number five, is for the total, or you could call this a running balance. I recommend that you have that one, but it can be optional. Remember to write everything down. It all counts. Even the tiny amounts add up over a year. So don't feel like you're being silly if you write down a dollar or two for something small. Write that down as well. Sometimes when we start our business, we inject cash to get it up and running, or it needs a little boost along the way. We might put our own funds into the business for some startup purchases, and this needs to be documented as well. Just make sure you're writing everything down, and it is best to add them as they happen or at the end of the week. There's nothing worse than missing things or struggling to remember what happened months ago. Another great way to keep the numbers moving is to leave yourself a note. If you don't update your numbers on a regular basis in a spreadsheet or a book, leaving yourself reminders on a post-it note can help us track the money movements when we do sit down to work on the numbers. I recommend post-it notes and one place to put these reminders, either an in-tray, a drawer, or even one of those paper spikes. One place that will help you not have to go hunting for all of your reminders. And last but not least, one of my biggest recommendations when you're starting with your business finances, you need to be careful of accounting programs. You don't want to overwhelm yourself with this huge learning curve when you're just starting out. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and until next time, happy biz beans to you.